Okay, I've got the carburetor all cleaned out. You want to make sure on this emulsion tube, there's little holes here. You want to make sure all those are clear. And you can drop that back down in there and screw it in. Now be careful screwing jets and things in here. There's no room for cross threading because this metal is so soft. If you cross thread or over tighten, you're just going to strip something out. So just snug does it. Okay, I'm going to put this needle back up in here. And I'm going to screw it in by hand until it bottoms out. And then I'll back it out to one and three quarter turns. So there's a half, a whole one, a half, three quarter. Okay, now this jet here goes up in this top hole. We can go ahead and put it in. The same thing here, you want to make sure that you get that in there right. No cross threading. And once again, just screw it down till it's snug. Another thing I don't know if I mentioned, when you're blowing in passages out, this one here is plugged. But if you look down in here right by the jet, I don't know if you guys will be able to see that or not. But there is a little hole you can see there. So make sure you don't forget to blow out any of the passages. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this bottom plug in. If you look here, there's a hole in the side. And there's a hole up in here. That's the way it goes up in here like that. This solid end is just the nut for the bowl. And again, we just want to make that snug. We don't need that much on it. Now, we got this for the needle seat. And right here is our little gasket for it. And then we're going to put this right down in there. Same thing goes here. Don't over tighten this. And be careful to get it threaded in there the right way. Yep. And we'll get our 10 millimeter and tighten that up. Okay, after we get that needle seat in there and tight, we'll put the needle valve in. And we want to make sure it moves freely in there. And then we can put this float back. You put this in there like that and then put the pin through. Some of these will have a tang that it actually, um, or not a tang, but a little wire clip that hangs onto this tang. This one didn't have it. Whether it did and it doesn't now, I don't know. Okay, now with that float in there, I don't know if you can tell, but if you look at this surface of the gasket and the top of that float, you can see that that float is actually a little bit too high. So I'm going to make a little adjustment here. Okay, I just barely bent that tab a little bit and got that float setting a lot leveler. It looks crooked in the camera, but it looks straight up by my eyes. So. But anyway, just resist the urge to grab it and bend it that way. Because you don't want to bend it where it connects to the float. You want to bend one of this tang or this tang. The tang in the middle that hits the needle is for your how high it will go. And this tang back here is for how far it will drop. All right, now I just put this gasket back in there. I just get it started on one side and just put my finger and run it around there and it usually goes right in. Be careful not to pinch, break, or kink it or something like that. It still feels pretty pliable, so we're just gonna go with it like it is. Okay, another thing before I close this up. See these two little ears that's on the carburetor? If you're taking that float pin in or out, it's really easy to have the urge to want to put it like that and just take something and pound on it. But just be careful because I have seen these ears break off the carburetors before. Now if you notice how this float looks like a horseshoe and the pivot's right back here. If you notice on the back of this fuel bowl, it's the same thing. So when we put this on, we're going to want this facing that way, just like it was supposed to be. That way the float doesn't hit nothing. And then we got the gasket and the nut that goes on here. Okay, now I just took my wrench and tightened that snugly. It don't have to be as tight as you can get it. It's not holding the wheel or nothing on. It's just holding the fuel bowl on the carburetor. So, now I'm going to clean these gasket surfaces up. And I got this one here and I'm going to have to make a gasket next. Okay, there's one other thing here I got to put in. And that's this fuel vent. 
that they had a tube going to it. Now when I got this off here, it was like that. And the hose was pinched over here. So we're going to take this fuel and put it in like this. And it just, you just take it and tap it a couple times. And it goes right in. Okay, now to cut this gasket, I'm just going to hold this down on here. And take a knife and go around the edges, just because I can on this one. And I cut one already, but I can cut these holes out by hand. If you have a set of leather punches handy, that really helps that. So what I'm going to do is make me a line, basically. You want to hold this down. You could put a couple screws in there if you really wanted to, but you have to be careful not to break this piece. There you can see I got an outline of the gasket. Now I can just trim that right out. All right, so we want to get the holes in here marked for the bolt holes. I'm going to line this gasket up and hold it there. I just take my fingers and push, and you can see that is making an indentation. After I get an indentation, I can just cut here because I can feel the hole underneath. Like I say, this don't have to be exact. Okay, now I got two of them gaskets cut. As long as those um, holes will fit over the studs, we're in good shape. 